Okay. Okay, so I'll bring the meeting to order at 3.44 p.m. computer time. I don't know what your clock in there says. It's 3.47, but the computer says 3.44. Yeah, that clock's bad. Okay. Uh, all right, can I get a motion on the minutes? Move to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm, I'm in favor too, so minutes to approve. Um, the yearbook uh, question. Does anybody have any comments or discussion about that? Well, I was glad to hear that we didn't have anyone that stiffed us. That's the good news. Yeah. Um, I do wonder whether they know how to set up the pages. Because in the newspaper business, in the private sector, our size depends on the ad revenue. Now, they probably have some additional things that they want to be sure to get in that's regardless of the revenue stream. So they need to be able to figure out whether they're A, number one, either not selling enough, not charging enough, or want to include too much information that makes it not worth, it has to be worth more. Yeah, from what I read, they didn't sell enough ads. Correct. They probably had already submitted to a certain layout. Is that, is that correct? Does anybody know? I, I believe they did. That's correct. Yeah. And, and um, one of the things I did stress to them right off the bat this year is I want to sit with them and talk about how, uh, like a costing model to make sure they know what their budget is and what they can do. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, from, from my perspective, it, 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 it's twofold. One is it, it's, it's students on the committee that aren't fully understanding their responsibilities and it's a guidance that they're getting as to what do they need to do to fulfill their responsibilities. Right. And what we, people on these committees, this is a learning experience for them. It's fun to be on the yearbook committee, but right. it's also how do you lay things out? How do you financially pull things together, et cetera? And, and there's responsibilities associated with that and that's part of the learning that we're trying to provide, not just a fun thing to get on your resume for college and not really have to do the work to support it. There are formulas in terms of page counts and the size of the pages determine how it's cut so it's most economic. Like if I want to, if I need to squeeze an extra ad in, I may not always be able to do that because I've got to go up four pages or eight pages in a whack depending on the size of the paper. It, it, it depends, it's, it's a, it is fluid. But once you make the commitment, then but you still have some time to throw a few more things in that you get caught up on. So they, they may not understand that piece of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Or, or they don't charge enough of the ads. Do they have a faculty advisor? They do, they do have a faculty advisor. They, that was in the email trail that, that uh, Matt provided to us. Okay, and that person should be the one that would be managing that stuff, I would say. That's correct. That's okay. correct. And that's who we probably will have to talk to. Yeah. Matt, of course, is going to tell me I have to go to that meeting, and that's okay. Well, <laughs> I think it would be cool if we could have Ellie bring her expertise. I used to teach a class here with Jamie Martin for years. And I, used, and I gave a full page to the kids every, every month. They had a full page of articles from them about what was happening in school. I, I have no impact on that now anymore. That's, those days are done. I what don't was know. the dollar amount of the shortage? About 1800 bucks, something yeah. like that, in yeah. every service. That's a lot. It is a lot. And what's the total budget? That I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that either. Hold on, I'm gonna open up that email thing, see if it was in there, I remember. I didn't mean to look it up. I don't recall the budget being in there. Do you remember the, the name? Overage. Do you remember the name of the uh, vendor? I do not. Oh, that's another interesting one here too. Um, hold on a second. I put that in my new file. Oh, maybe it's here. Is it Justin's? Is Justin? I have not been involved. I believe it is Justin's, but Brian would know the answers to these questions. I okay, the co-advisor is Carrie Alley Violet. Yep. She's a business technology slash career pathways. Mm -hmm. I do not have that reference date on that. No. And that's not included in the email string that we have. Would you like me to have Mr. Stack come to the next finance committee meeting and talk about it? Uh, or you could just get us the information yeah. and plan yeah. to uh, address it. Yeah. Matt, it, know. You know what? If they have a budget, I probably would like to see the budget mm -hmm. and how many pages they're set up for. 
And then I could figure out how much they should have set up for. I move that we appoint Ellie as the liaison between the finance committee and the Jostens uh, uh, yearbook folks. You, you might I can't move anything. That. You can't. You yeah, Tom, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. I think, I mean, if you get me the information, I, I don't mind meeting with her or the class. That's I don't want to do it on all the, every week. Yeah, no. I don't want to do no, that. No, it might be nice, though, just in the setup. I mean, they're, they're probably starting to gear up now for the yearbook to get pictures all through the year. So yeah. to have a nice basis to work off from and an understanding of right. the expectations right. from somebody that's lived it. If I know what they're doing, then they. maybe I can get Alicia to come over. She's the local editor. Tell them she needs some help. So, Ellie, do you want to take that on? Big shoes to fill. Um, I, I'll, no, so not yet. You want to take it on? I probably will. But I don't want, like I said, I just don't want to be in a classroom every day or every week. No, it's not no. going to happen. I don't have the time. They don't meet that often. Be, be honest with you. Let's do the kickoff meeting. The kickoff meeting I'd like to go at, or meet with the advisor and the, and the person that's in charge of the yearbook and Matt. I mean, I don't, I don't shouldn't be alone with these staff members. I'd, I'd like you to be there because that will help you learn to go forward and yeah. answer questions to ask. And their pathway advisor person, she may even know. I mean, it, it may, may there may be nothing wrong with their setup, and it may be strictly that they don't charge enough money. Because see, revenue okay. determines the page count in newspapers. Okay, so keeping with the request to move along. Yep. Um, any more comments on this, or can we move to the next item? Not on this, but I do want to come back onto some things that torque me. And it probably showed oh. up in my comments. Okay. Here. I could. So I'm asking Brian to send us the budget for the yearbook, and I said Ellie's willing to meet with the yearbook committee to talk about the revenues and the setup. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, I took care of it. I also sent him an email to come to the next uh, finance, finance committee. committee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Trust and revolving funds. Yeah. For, for um, any any questions or comments about that? This, this looks pretty much the same with a couple of additions, like a $423 increase and a $259 increase on the other. That's just your interest, isn't it? Uh, yeah, for the most, yes. Special ahead and capital improvement. Yeah. Yes. yes. Agreed. Yeah, that didn't look like there was anything different no, in there. Wasn't much of a concern or right. comment at all. Okay. So any discussion on that? Are we all set with that? We're all set. Yeah, I'm, also, I'm okay. okay. Um, all right, the attachments. The one that I had a question about for the um, the monthly revenue report. Yep. What is meant by reverse wrong date? Oh, you have the. That's in the in the detail. Okay, hold on. I gotta find it. I gotta find the report that I sent to you. Um, Second section. Uh, page the, one. The attachment is the third one from the left. Second. I think it's a period to period change, Matt. Looks like to me. Something That's that fine. should have been one fiscal year versus another, maybe. Yes, agreed. And it's Where a town. It looks like it's a fiscal year period, something that ended up in one fiscal year versus another. Yes. That's correct. Okay, so, so 2019, 18, 19 instead of 19, 20, or sorry? No, it's probably a June 30th. It was probably originally recorded in October, and it should have been as of June 30th. Okay, okay. So it's a monthly, it was a monthly issue rather than a year. Yeah, and you can see it above. It happened in both Newton payments. There's yeah. one up above for a million thirty nine thousand. One below yeah. for one fifteen five hundred. Yeah, the credit coming in and that taking it back out. Yeah, that looks like the June payment. Okay. Uh, now, Jamie, I know you had questions about manifest aid, and I think um, Matt responded to them. Do you have any other questions? Yeah. So about the, that? the one that taught me the most. So there's a few of them, but the one that taught me the most was issuing payments for climbing equipment. So unless we've confirmed that we've received the revenues, we shouldn't be issuing the payments. Have we received the revenues on that? Yeah. So the cash is, has come in? The grant was uh, given to the school. Correct? The grant was given to the school. Yeah. I, I'm not exactly certain whether the, the physical cash has been received by the school. 
So the 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 check because the thing is is we got the approval. Oh no, there was a no, check. The, with yeah, the check came there in. Was I knew check it did. With yeah. that. There was yeah. a check. So with the, the cash did come in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was my concern because I didn't see anywhere of that, and obviously when I typed that up, I was a little bit. Jamie, I did. I did ask Matt to. I asked Matt to take a look at the manifest and put in the manifest in the future any received money for grants like that so that you know. Yeah, so the fun. alertus came up as well, and that was yep. a grant, a, a large percentage of Correct. it, not the entire well, thing. So you wouldn't know that grant. because it doesn't say that okay. there. Okay, and, and you have a question this month about that alertus thing. Yeah. There, just... there is a correction that, that we identified just now, and um, we've actually pulled that last check back, and we're going to reissue it. We have a Bigger or smaller? It's going to be a smaller check. Okay, we, we have an injury in our office. I'm the one who was keying in the invoices. Yeah, yeah, so, that whole damn thing. yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so that was one. Um, and again, not to belabor some of these things, but I don't understand why you know, originally we got the Dells because we have to have the Dells and they're one time MacBook, and now we're doing more MacBooks. It seems that anybody that likes Mac better comes in and gets a Mac. Yeah, that really shouldn't be the way it works. Yeah, that isn't the way it works. So that's why I'm here. I want I want you to hear from me that that Jody Gutterman handles millions and millions of dollars of grants and funds and is more comfortable with the Mac. So I authorized her Mac. I did not know that they ordered two at once. So Kevin Harrington, the person who manages our data in the tech department, uh, also asked his Mac was at end of life. So as a result of that, I went and saw Bob and talked with Matt about the approval process for the purchase of the second Mac and that that, that has to come to my desk if anyone's getting it. I've bought two Mac, three Macs since I've been here. This one, when I was hired, I was asked what I wanted. One for Jody and one for, no, 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 no. Actually, I, it's bigger than it needs to be and I, well anyway. Don't even tell yeah. anybody that. Yeah, I know, no, physically it's bigger. I wish I'd gone with the smaller one. Um, but the the um, I, Jody and Ke they approved Kevin's, but I made it clear to everyone that any other Mac purchases will come to me. I will say, and I want to make sure everyone understands, we do purchase iPads for educational purposes, particularly for special education. So those are Apple products that we do purchase and have always purchased. What what is that for? Just a well, I didn't. I asked Jody if it was hers. I didn't ask her for that explicit iPad I'm just, because I'm just it's for students. But there, there special are a number needs. of educational applications that are really great for kids with special needs. Uh, I can tell you from my own experience as a K two principal that we we worked really hard to raise funds to buy iPads for our K two school for uh, mathematics practice because the everyday math program had applications that lined up with the program, and the kids are digital natives, so they just fly with it, right? Um, we also used it a lot for sight words and uh, um, spelling identification for young kids. But I will say that, that uh, um, the, number of, uh, the number of students that have iPads here is far less than what we had in my previous district. But I just but want you to know that we do use those devices. I, I, I find if I could turn back time my son would not have had access to an iPad when he had access to an iPad. <laughs> I, I would agree with that myself. It just, it, yeah. it, I, I find them to be um, less than helpful in the long term. Depends on how it's managed yeah. and what they have access to on it. So we have very limited and focused apps on ours. But I would so say we, that- we spend like $500 for an iPad for a kid because they could get taught on it better? Well, yeah, but it, you have to understand that in special education, that's written into the kid's program. It's not like we just go buy them willy-nilly and no, we don't spend $500 like the iPads that we bought for Matt and myself and Patty for recording these meetings. I went online and found them cheaper. They were $300. But we do buy iPad devices. They're very common practice in education these days. So I just don't want anyone to see iPads in the future and be like, what's going on? And, and frankly, coming from Maine and the Maine Laptop Initiative, I would prefer that we were on Apples, but we're not. So that's where we are. You have a state income tax in Maine. Uh, well, it's not just that. It's the, it's the educational component of Apple computers, but we're on Dell, so we're, we're done. Yeah. You know, like we're, we're, in the, we're already set up in that platform, so there's no, I'm not requesting to change it, but I just want you to it's know that really we do. It's really the software that's the difference because I've worked on both PCs and Macs. For the most part, you can't tell where it's from one versus the other. It's usually the, the um, internet, the Outlet Express versus Safari or well, everyone uses Google Chrome now. They suck. 
Well, I know, but that's what everyone uses. Speaking of Google, so you, 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 one of your responses was, was pl we're planning on 500 Google Chromebooks. I think that was the total. He For came the, back and, and responded to me afterwards. Yeah, 500? So, but I think that was total. Right, but so if I, if I, I, I wrote in 500, 500 and then Bob came and saw me later. Okay, it would be okay. nice because we had talked once before about having him come in and explain the replacement and the IT yep. process with us. But to me, I just do the simple math and I say, I got 640 kids in high school. They all get them their freshman year, they keep them all year long. So I divided by four, that's 160. So with the remaining, I've got 300 and change left over. I got about a thousand kids left over. That means these things are on average lasting for three years. No, I talked to Bob today and I need to get, sense. I need to get the facts straight on this because can you clarify that? Because I, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I agree. The math doesn't work to me. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly and, when, when the, the big laptops that we just replaced, we said the average age of the replacement of the laptops is five to seven years and laptops go off sleep much faster than Google Chromebook does because it's just a portal. It right. Work software. Uh, right. I, I got your marching order. He gave me marching orders. Okay. To, to look into the program more. I'm gonna have more detail. It's just that right now my focus is budget and tax rate. Yep. Um, so I'm steering towards that in the next couple of weeks. Jamie, did you say that, I just wanna make sure I understand this myself because I hadn't asked this explicit question. They ordered 500 computers? No, I think they've got 500 total. We have 500. I think that's, the way he responded to me. Okay. I he wrote well, gonna five hundred. He's going to get five hundred. Yeah, that's we didn't no, buy no, five hundred. No. I'm rereading it, and, and you, you no, no, interpret it that way. That's not how I I interpret it. No, no, it's five hundred coming this year. That's no, no, no. He's no. he's interpreting it the way I wrote it. Okay. Okay. Which is the way I regurgitated it from Bob. Okay. Bob later came to me after I sent it to him. Yeah. Changing what five hundred meant. Okay, we okay. Uh, okay. We have 500 so, computers. Yeah. Bob said to me today he ordered 20 because he had 20 that were end no, of life. Those are laptops. Okay. He's talk he's talking about Chromebooks. Chromebooks. Yeah. The, what the kids have, the okay. 20 is for the teachers. But so if you're saying that you you're, you're getting into it, that's fine. Just get me an update on that. I'll just put that on the file. So well, I understand where your priorities. I'll tell you I want an update. And yeah. and part of that is couched in the I mean, certainly, if someone told me that we bought 500 computers, I just about went over the deep end just now. Because I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, I was yeah, right, right. So I, I just want to make sure everyone understands that we're hiring a new tech director. And part of hiring a new tech director is for us to get a handle on the money. Same thing with athletics. So I've Matt, asked Matt to audit athletics and technology over the course of this year in preparation for hiring someone new. And one of the conversations that I want to have is around leasing versus purchasing. Yeah. Because the upkeep on leasing is very different and uh, districts I've worked in in the past that's been very successful. But I don't know, Bob, Bob said that it's, there are pros and cons. So I've asked him to talk to Matt about that. We met about it a little bit today. But I didn't, now I understand when I spoke to you and you said well, 500 computers, I was like, what? So that we did not order 500 computers. I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, that's a, that's reassuring. That would be absolutely. I insane. came in here thinking we ordered 500 no. computers. But this goes, right. exactly. this goes back to yeah. all four of us digging in deeper to the finances, and we all just kind of have to take a deep breath and make sure that we fact checked everything before we. Because I mean, I I myself was like, what? So I just want to make sure that we're all doing that because it's, it's hard. It's scary as a board member to think there's so much out there that we don't really know or are, comfortable, are sure of, yeah. you know? And, and I, I appreciate that you guys are learning along with us. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're definitely brand new. You're a couple yeah. of years, but you, you relied on others to give you the information. And now, yeah. as we really, really look at the information, it's not exactly as we thought it was. Well, the other thing, too, is that for me, my consciousness was so focused on figuring out how to make this place work because everyone left that now that things are settling and I've right, got a steady team, yes. I can focus on other things, right? Like yes, I totally the last that. month, my team has handled the transition process. I've been able to work with people in a way that I've never done since I've been here. So we can dig into some of these things now. Right, and, and we may have these questions, we want to be prepared for this budget process. Yeah. I don't want to rely. Oh, okay, okay, I'd like to move this along. Yeah, okay. thanks Jim, good point. All right, yeah. you're right, Chief. Um, all right, next. interject something to as well, though. Um, and this is really old, but we talked about 
talked about the climbing wall before, and I understand on this from the school board agenda that additional funds for the climbing wall in play. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, there we did. Yeah, I uh, think. I think that what, what I'll say is this. At the original presentation of the climbing wall, I watched both videos and Vicki said at the first meeting that the district would have to purchase the curtain that goes over the climbing wall. Right. And then at the second meeting, it was very clear from the board, you'd have to be, uh, well, let's just say it would be very difficult to interpret anything but the intention of the board, which was very clear, do not spend any district funds on this climbing wall. Yeah. Right. The next day, we got a PO for the curtain. Um, so there are some things, I, what I'm gonna say at the meeting this evening is, uh, the grantor who paid for the climbing wall had an additional $2,400 and is gonna pay for the curtain. But because of board policy, you have to formally accept that. It does not require a public hearing because it's less than $5,000. Right. So we're just asking you to accept that tonight to pay for that, and we did not use any district funds. Okay. Anything okay. else regarding this matter will have to be discussed in non-public. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, anything else on the, um, this uh, budget, budget or revenue report? No, not from me. No, I'll follow up on that and some of the other ones. I, I gave you the one you saw in summary because we went through the other day and I took out most of it. Budget adjustments, we've got uh, 3015. For 15,000 for books. Yeah, so that's a decrease of information access and an increase of, for books, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, How's it going evaluating the information access items? How are we evaluating them? What is it? Okay, information access is the uh, the online services. So, for example, Alesk is a is a math um, okay. tutoring kind of system, and my son actually uses it for college. And um, there's a form. Um, on the district's front web page that um, teachers, if they want an online resource, they have to fill out the form, hand it off to the um, academics director for approval. And um, um, if, if I see any online purchases come through, um, I have to block them un unless they've been previously approved by the academic director. Okay, so we, what you this meant we took money out of the info access item, uh, budget item and moved it over to books. Yes. That's a nice thing. Yes. We tried to put 40,000 in books last year, but it didn't make it when the budget failed by 10 votes. So we're trying to. So Matt, do you need a motion on that? Yes, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Books are better in technology. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm in favor also. Okay, that passes. Okay, the next one is uh, request 3029. This How are ACT in this initiative? Um, they're part of the teacher's contract. So, I have to look it up, I'm sorry. Right. I, I think it's more of a, um, I'll read you the exact yeah. definition. Can we just keep going and I'll come back to that? Well, it's the whole thing, is, okay. is the ACP oh. and it's just, the money like it's was taken out. It, it's just reclassifying it. Yeah, because it's called uh, ACP is the initiative and it goes into teacher's initiative for each of the groups. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're there, you're you're good with us. Oh, that's not us. Not us. Oh, uh, somebody else trying to call. That's okay. All right. Um, and okay, so so we're going to find out what ACP initiatives are. Except that I think it might have been an aggregated amount from what it looks like, and then broken down by school. I think Jamie's right yeah, on that. Correct. Looks like. So it just dispersed by school uh, as opposed okay. to an aggregate amount. Yes, that's correct. Okay, but these increases for FICA and retirement are these? What is the reason for these increases? Well, no, what, what it is, is it, it's, we have it budgeted as a single line, and then we're breaking it out 
by the actual cost associated with that line. So Jim, take a look at teachers bakey. Yeah. Now, that became part of somebody's W-2 and associated with that becoming part of somebody's W-2 or aggregate that amount in W-2, it so brought along that, FICA that, and retirement. So is the breakdown of like the line item of a specific ACC initiative for Bakey? Yes. Yes. Okay, I got that. Okay. So it's not, it's, it's not taking money out of like professional development, for example, and putting it into FICA. Sorry. No, no, no. Okay. The, the the four thousand is the actual stipend, but then we pay the FICA and teacher retirement right. costs. Right. But the, the aggregate amount is the nineteen oh nine nine. Anything else on this? No. M move to accept. Second. Approve. I should say. Move Any to approve. more discussion? No. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else here? Let's see. Uh, no public comment, I assume? There's no public. No, no one here. Okay. All right, so, uh, Matt, you want to get on with that other subject? Okay. I don't, I don't think he really wants to, but I think he has to. Okay. <laughs> Just Correct. to be totally fair. All right. Yeah. So, um, Jim, I'm handing out a form here. And um, what this is, oh, sorry, Ellie. Right. I get it. Oh. Thanks. Okay. What this is, is the estimated revenues. And um, the district is required to file the estimated revenues by September 1st. Um, the, what I typically do is, um, or what I've done in the past is file those on time. And just before the tax rate is set, I readjust them with the most current information. What, um, you're, what you're gonna find here is that the, um, the state budget hasn't passed so a lot of the state revenues are complete guesses as compared to last year okay so the the draft that i'm handing out right now for most of the state revenues are complete guess okay if i don't do this um the towns of newton and kingston won't they they go into a queue in the state to set the tax rate if I don't file this form, they don't go into the queue. And the longer we wait, the later the tax bills come out. And it's going to be detrimental for both the towns and the school district gets blamed for it. Okay? So it's beneficial for me to get in this estimate to the state and revise it just before the tax rate is set. And what is the tax rate set? Okay. It's usually in October, early October. Correct. Well, late October, early November. Yeah, and they start work. Yes, you're right. You're right. We last year we caught some trouble from the town of Newton on a Facebook page that was inappropriate and uncomfortable, and we had to call them on it because they were saying that they couldn't do their work because we were holding them up. Ugh, that's awful. And she put it on Facebook and it was just ridiculous, so. A town official from Newton did? Uh -huh. Nice press. Well, that, that's not unusual. Um, yeah. Just so you know, but because the school has traditionally been late getting up with that information. That's right, but so it. They're probably reacting to that. But the town's gotta be in the same boat that we're in right now because they, how can the town set their rates either because don't, doesn't the town get some state revenue? Correct, yes. But they, they don't have their assessed values in either. So the moment I hit submit on this, oh. I'm way ahead of them. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay. For both towns, right? Yes. Right. Isn't that sweet? I like that. I wanted Matt to get some town brownie points. So, they don't hurt. Let what me... happens when we actually get the budget passed and then these numbers get revised? No, no, this is... This is based on this year's budget. Oh, yeah, the, it's yes. It's already passed. But no, you're right. The state budget, you mean. Right. Yes. Okay. When the state budget gets passed, yeah. I'm going to revise these numbers. Okay. So depending Presuming on when that happens... Yeah. Depends on when it happens. It may not affect our December tax bill, but it could offer opportunities for the June tax bill. No. Once, once you set the December rate, your June is one half of the December. June is always one half of December. If we so, don't have a state budget by December, that ain't happening. Yeah, yeah, we, it, it's gonna be bedlam. It's gonna be bedlam, good. Then we can let the Republicans and the Democrats, and the Democrats in particular, conquer, duke it out. Yeah. I left that comment on 
comment about it? What is your, what's your response about if we don't have a state budget by December? We can't do anything in terms of revising these revenues. Right, but is there, are there any regulatory requirements that they have to have a budget by a certain date? They missed it already, didn't they? I think it's been there beyond that. So they're they're hobbling along with uh, continuing revolution. Conti thank you. Conti yeah, CRs. Hey, you know. Do they have a default budget just like we do? No, but but if they if they have a rule, they also have the ability to move the goalpost. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So we're at their mercy, really, on this one here. Yeah. Except we can't put pressure on our state reps. The, the, the crap will get off the pot type yeah, of thing. Two, okay. two reps out of how many hundred? Like 410, I think. All right. All right. Can I jump in and, and uh, yes, tell you ahead. what the effect is? Yes. All yeah. right. So I'm anticipating a reduction in revenues as compared to the prior year of $359,463. 359463 Now, what this, let me just kind of quickly go through the increases and decreases. Uh, tuition, I'm expecting an additional 143000 I'm rounding, for Fremont. I'm trying to get that more to actual. Earnings on investments, I've increased it by $15,000. Um, last year, we, got, uh, we earned about $70,000 in interest income. I anticipate that number to be lower this year, and I think $25,000 is safe. Uh, $25,000 in the earnings? Yeah, $25,000 for um, earnings on investments. That's up 15, you said? Uh, up yeah. 15 compared to the last year. What did you say? I didn't catch it on tuition. You took that um, it's up 143450 Okay. Matt, can you, can you email these numbers to us? Absolutely. Okay. And can you tell us what the bottom line is? Yeah, the bottom line is a reduction of revenues of 359463 Okay. Okay. Now, I'm also going to tap both impact fees for both towns. So that's going to be an increase of $89,870. Okay, and I'm actually going to be sending out those letters hopefully next week. $89,000 how much? $89,870. Now, when the tax rate is determined, $87,000 is going to go towards Kingston. $22,914 is going to go to Newton. $2,000. Sorry, 22914 is going to go to Newton. 87642 goes to Kingston. You said 22000 but you got 89000 in impact fees. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. So it's going to be 2200 for Newton and an 87000 for Kingston? Mm, no. No, I'm sorry. The impact fees is 110000 total in revenue, oh, okay. an right. increase of 89870 okay. over last year. Is that increase because Kingston's going to be now? Yeah, uh, no one's ever asked any funds from Kingston, and I've done right. my analysis, and I'm, I'm feeling safe about drawing down the full balance in one year. And it's actually kind of good timing. Because yeah, okay. wait until there, I get to some of this other stuff. Is this 89 increase of 89,000 or 110 included in the shortage of 359,463? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, um, the next line item is school building aid. I'm showing a reduction of 25130 over the prior year, and that's normal. Um, there's actually a schedule through the remainder of the bond for the district until 2026, and it declines year after year after year. Okay. Kindergarten aid. This is one of those numbers that's a complete guess. I put in $84,000. Last year, we received about $102,000. So I'm showing, I'm, I'm saying we're gonna receive about 19,000 less. And this is only because we've already received, I think uh, 20, 22 or $24,000 this year, and they make it in four payments. So the 84,000 represents what their current payment is times four. And it's just- now, Let me ask you again, I mean, you, must, this, you probably have this on the form, but of all of these numbers you're stating included in the three hundred and fifty nine thousand four hundred and sixty three dollars. Yes. They are. Yes. Okay. This is just a breakdown. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Catastrophic aid, I'm putting it two hundred thousand dollars, which is a seventeen thousand dollar reduction compared to last year, and it's a complete guess based upon their prior payments. It's special education costs and they 
the, the, there's another concern that I want the group to be aware of, which is that the Department of Education is limping on less than a skeleton staff. So finding out the information for the actual figures is going to be difficult. Yeah. There, it's bad. Now, now here's a kicker. The next one is Medicaid. Um, last year we budgeted a hundred, I'm sorry, ninety thousand dollars, and we received one hundred and sixty-three. This year I'm budgeting ten thousand dollars, and there is a rule change in the state of New Hampshire for Medicare, which requires a physician to sign off on the IEPs, and we don't have a physician on staff, so. Yes. You've got to be joking. It, it, and just so you know, I just got a text from Jody Gutterman. She's at a, a meeting with the special ed directors. The educators, this happened through, through the Department of Health and Human Services or through Medicaid, not through the education side. And so they are, the education community is fighting hard to rectify this. But we are notifying the board this evening of this change so that you may contact your legislators to so let them know you're just some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. No, in Concord. In Concord, it's here. It's all New Hampshire. Hampshire. So, is that person a member of the American Medical Association? I do not. Doctors know. need a new kick in the uh, mm -hmm. checkbook. Well, and the thing is, is that it, you know, I was talking to a colleague two days ago, and he said that they get two hundred and thirty thousand dollars from Medicaid billing, and he said if we hire a doctor at a hundred thousand dollars, plus all the paperwork and the time that it takes to process all of this, wow. he, he said it's just you're going to end up getting sixty thousand dollars out of. $150,000 investment. He's like, it's just a waste of, so the, wow. the everyone is That's reeling at this. That's percent of the entire decline. Exactly, so we, we, we want you to know about it and we're planning as if that's a reality, but there's a battle going on about it. Wow. They came, should, and this was done with no notice. And should we as a board pass something and, and send it as a, as a- Like a letter? A unified board position. Um, to the legislature? Yeah, dear legislature, SOBs. Yep. What, what you, what, what you, you really could do is call them. your legislators yep. in your communities and really get on them about it. Explain to them what the impact is to the people. Well, but would, would Kevin Wilder, who's head of the Finance Committee? He'd know about this. He, he, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. He, uh, I think he talked to Peter today. Okay. And, uh, um, but what they talked about was more about the, the fact that the state hadn't passed the global budget. So I think talking to Ken would be a really good idea for all of you. Okay, can I move on? Yes, please, yeah. Okay, so the final um, change is the use of fund balance. I'm showing uh, 1013000 for use of fund balance, which is down from the prior year of 490976 Now, if you recall, the board voted at the end of June to set aside $400,000. That's why it dropped four hundred and ninety thousand. I'm not seeing something called use of fund balance. Go to the last page. There's two numbers. Yeah. One's for a hundred thousand, the other one's for nine thirteen. Okay. Okay, that's the hundred and thirteen thousand. It's just that this is the way the form falls. Okay. And we're saying this is down by what? Uh four hundred and ninety thousand nine hundred and seventy six. Now, if you recall, the board set aside four hundred thousand yeah. uh, uh, dollars into a um, what's called a contingency fund, and it's only for emergency purposes. However, the board could board release it to reduce the tax rate. Okay, and you can see there's a line there for we have up till this until October we set the tax rate it. to okay. do something. I do recommend that you keep it here because. Um, I'm anticipating revenues to be different next year, and it would be a good smoothing tactic for the tax rate if we could retain it for one year and then deal with it next year. When did the decision have to be made on that? When we set the tax rate. So late October, early November? It'd probably be late October. Okay. I'm raising my hand, Jim, but if you want to go first, it's Fine with me. No, I, I'm just saying that we're going to have to look at the whole picture, I think, before we can make up our minds about that. Hopefully we'll have a budget done by the right. state at that point. And, and we may not want to release all of it. I mean, maybe we want, depends. Well, yeah. I'm hoping you don't because it would, it would I'm, my goal is, is to smooth out the tax rate so that there's no large swings in the tax rate. Yeah. Um, 
and I think it would be beneficial. So like next year, if you think about it too, we're gonna have increases as a result of the teacher's contract that, that's gonna be normal increases that were voted by the taxpayers last year, okay? We could use those funds to spread it over the number of years so the increase isn't so dramatic. Steve. Yeah. Okay, now had the board retained these funds years ago, the impact wouldn't have been so significant this year. That's, that's what, I, so I, I, I agree with you, I mean, it's good planning, it's good yeah. fiscal planning. I, I wanted to remind Jim, but I wanted the two of you, because you're newer to the board, to, to, to realize that last October, um, we, we, we brought it to the board as to what to do with the withholding of funds. We recommended that the board and the BUDCOM, or the, that the board withhold the 400,000, and they didn't want to do that. And we warned people that the tax rate would swing if we did that, and that's what's occurred. So they, they gave back the full 1.4 million a year ago, and, and, right. and that's fine, but it did exactly what we thought it would do, is it created a less taxes last year, but now we're paying for it this year when we want to withhold the money, which is fine. And we may not have four votes to do that this year either. Right. We don't know yet. It's, right, it's and, and whatever the board chooses, I understand. I just want to remind right. people that if we continue not to withhold some money, that we continue to risk the taxes swinging the way they are. I get that, but Thank we can you. take a horse to water, but we can't, can't always make, make right. a drink, so. Okay. All right, so I'm sure you're all thinking, what is the tax rate going to be? And my crystal ball is based upon last year's information because the, the towns have not set their assessed values yet. All right, so this is a complete guess based upon last year. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so the total tax rate now, this is local and state combined. $17.39 for Kingston, $22.01 for Newton. Now compared to last year, Kingston, this would be a dollar two cent increase or 6.23% increase. Is that for, a two increase for Kingston? Yes. Yeah. And a dollar, a dollar 38 for Newton or a 6.69% increase. Okay. The result of the, the increase is a direct result of increase of appropriations of 1.1 million and a reduction of local revenues of $359,000. The tax impact to a taxpayer with an assessed value of $300,000 in Kingston is $5,217. And for Newton, they're writing feverishly, so I'm slowing down. For Newton, I, would like to print it up and send to it. I can email this to you. I'm reading off of notes. Yep. In Newton, $6,603. It's an increase of $306 for Kingston and $414 for Newton. And it's so you're saying that the tax on a $300,000 house, if that estimated rate, would be $6,603 in Newton? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that's a $414 increase. Yes. Yes. What was the Kingston number? Uh, 5,217. 5, what? 5, what is it, 5 what? 5,217. Could you email that document to everyone? I can. Do you want it to the whole board, or do you want it just at least? Uh, I would just email it to the three people that we're talking to now, and then the whole board later. Yeah, with, with, you know, what you're already seeing happen, and it's been happening for a while, and it's just going to get worse and worse, is you're seeing this split happening between the Newton and the Kingston tax rates, and that will end up as the... What, what is the increase? That's not new. No, what no, it's, it's, it's getting exasperated. Oh. Jim, well, are you, are you asking, it was a dollar, three cents. No, right? no, no, the, the, the increase in the total, the total is 5217, what's that? 306 is the plus. 600? 306. 306. Yeah. Okay. So, Jamie, can I speak to that really quickly? Sure. Okay. The tax base, the, the underlying tax base for between the two towns is completely different. Uh -huh. Kingston is much more of a commercial base. And they got a lot more coming in. 
and there's nothing happening in Newton but a few correct. people's lots. That's right, correct. and this is completely out of the school district's control. Correct. It's well, only the town. The, 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 point I'm, yeah, the point I'm making is, as this develops, this is another reason, Tom, I think you and I talked about this prior to the reorganization. Mm -hmm. As this develops, it's going to become more and more likely that Kingston people will say, oh, let's go ahead and spend more money on this, this, and this, and Newton people will be more likely to say, no, let's not spend more money on this, this, and this. Yep. And you'll start getting um, cross purposes that. between the two towns. It was important to try and get the groups together and integrate as a single community because the economics of it are going to tend to lead people in different directions just because of the tax bases in the two different towns. Again, I don't see Kingston going there to combine the two towns. No, 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 I, I mean, but by, by virtue of having people getting together in terms of the redistricting, people are now talking with each other, you're knowing people at a younger right, age, right. etc. cetera. There, there's discussions happening between the town as That's opposed to true. them staying completely separated for too long. That's very true. And then, and and then coming together is difficult. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it, yeah, I totally agree with you. There are a lot of pros to the reorganization. Yeah, the, the, this is one, because this, this is going to grow as an issue. Because did, Kingston's going to have three things coming on this year. Uh -huh. Did you get my email? Check. Yeah. And this, this projection is all based on yes? It, it is. It's, it, in particular, the state, the change in the state revenue combined with the... Uh, the change in the state revenue combined with the potential Medicaid issue. So a Medicaid is $160,000 that we're not getting. Right. And That's for the doctor one, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the other one is, I, I certainly, you know, it would be logical or reasonable to assume that we would get more this year than we did last year in state aid, but you never know. And most of the revenue drop at 359 is because you're making adjustments for 40% of it as a physicians and, and the rest of it is because of these adjustments that you highlighted. Right, we, the catastrophic aid could be more than 200,000 too. Well, well, don't forget, when we call our state legislatures, the jamokes up there in Concord have all this rainy fund, extra money, and not much of anything's coming back to education. That's right. That, you know, it's... The, the superintendents are beside themselves. They should be. Yeah. And I, I peep the, the it, John Q. Citizen ought to wake up because they're doing a lot of nasty things up there and, and not helping education. And Ken Weiler has a, is a charming man, but he's never supported public education, never. So. Which is amazing because his daughter is so committed. He had a bad experience with his kid in the elementary school, his son, and he's been pissed off at us ever oh, since. Oh, I see, okay. So. All right, I just want to, over it. I want to reiterate, this is all estimates. The state revenues are estimates. The assessed values are based upon last year. So the tax rate is going to be different when, we, when it finally comes out. You've done a good job in putting this together. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, yeah, thanks. Really, you have done a good job. Because yep. it gives us more information that we don't usually have at this point in time. Okay. So I, I really mean that sincerely. You did a good yeah. job in this. Well, you scared the bejesus out of this. Well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of, the, one of the strategies that we used was to motivate you to talk to your legislators, right? That's yeah, part of why I we're doing agree. this today. Yeah. We want to motivate you to be vocal. And don't forget Kevin St. James. He's a Kingston selected, but he's a, he's a county commissioner, and that has an impact. And yeah. if you really want to see some increases, you look at that county budget, See what they've done in the last 15 years. Those little SOBs job, have been spending money on like drunken sailors. Well, we're not, there's no live microphones in here. Yeah, there is. got one here. Video. So, there's still no general public here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's it. Um, Matt, any, that's it? That's it. That's all I've got. Okay. Anybody else? No, I'm doing good. It said, when are you getting home? Uh, the second. So, yeah, I'll be home the second. I'll be at this meeting so that night. Okay. Uh, that afternoon and night. Six lobsters, two things of <laughs> PEI, kill Just saying. But you know what you do, Lloyd? What? Put the beach bum and tell them to put it on Jim's account. <laughs> hey, I, I like, uh, oh, no, I no like, I like those actually. scallops when they cook them in the oven with lemons and the little topping. Yeah. Bread that crumbs. Good. Yeah, breadcrumb yeah. topping. Just tell them to put it on Jim's account. All right. Do you, have, do you have an account there, Mr. Jim? Yes. 
All right, we're going over yeah, after. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That ought to fly like pigs. <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, can you put this on Jim Baker's account? And they're going to say, what are you, hanging out with Tammy Faye? Yeah, oh, oh. Baker. yeah. Oh. Uh, all right, Jim, thanks for everything. We'll talk to you in a little while. Oh, he's got to end okay. the meeting. Oh, he's got to end, Jim, you got to end the meeting. Meeting adjourned at uh, 4.34. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.